Bow bow wow Bow bow wow Hey guys Energetic podcast We bring you Robin and Danny Markovic Marvin We bring you Music Real Talk with Marvin episode 48 Lower production value than usual Because we're on tour And also we didn't sleep at night So we kind of yeah, we, ban- we have a, we're about to collapse. We, I'm, I'm at least about to collapse. We're very tired. Yeah, we might have powered up and drove all night. Um, and it was actually a great time. We did uh, have a great time, yeah. It was a, it was a wonderful time so driving. It. No, no, to- it was worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. Yeah, I posted, a, well, I did my first meme this morning. Danny's been the meme guy, but I did the less is more meme. I gave Danny a meme thing, and it was lame, and he made it great. Yeah, le- so, it's, so it's like the less is more people, and then when you take the mask off, it's like, well, uh, no, chops. no chops. Got no chops, and, and then, then you put, you the, put mask the mask back, back on. on. It's pretty funny. Uh, it's pretty it's funny. Pretty fucking but it, it did open, like, a lot of people... Uh, you know find it hilarious which is like most of our fans not not as many people people weren't really offended people were just uh, saying their piece about it about like yeah sometimes you know but I caught like shredding is good but sometimes yeah first of all in a world where less is more I would certainly like more of those opinions Uh, you know what I mean it's just it's just a hard thing to defend in music Uh, but less is more less is more it's very done it's just you have to remember that a lot of people that tried it are just, you know, I'm not sure. we don't know that much about music. Again, if if you're, if you're less of you at your job is more quality, it typically means that you're doing a shitty job. Yeah. You and, know what I mean? And music... Because they're like, what? Because they imagine, the people that say it imagine themselves playing more. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I agree. Less of, less of your shitty blues rock soloing, the, like, you know, is, it's things, probably more. There are other things in life with quantity equals quality and at least in, on some level like you can't you can't have two grain of rice I, I i understand that but i'm saying when we say more is more they think that we mean that we should fill up every 30 second note possible we, on but every we don't moment play like that. of every song i know it's like we th- we mean more cool shit in yeah, the song cool not shit. just like make every phrase more cool rhythmically shit, less bullshit. more cool shit less bullshit not make every phrase rhythmically identical by filling up every measure to the- that's just so stupid and also it's more, not what music more is. means more tools more stuff that you can do with music yeah they just imagine like they're just thinking more notes, less notes. That's yes. what they're thinking. Well, they think about like a, a, 30, a, ri- a measure like a of measure. 30 second notes and like how many should you fill up. They yeah, think more about it spatially. Less. So it's like, oh, like, what do you mean? You think it's a great blues solo to go... You're retarded. you think you should never take a break for a measure? If you call me retarded from that paradigm where that's what you think I mean, then you're double retarded. I'm sorry. It's just, it's so stupid. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's very silly. It's very silly. And Ingwe, the, the hate Ingwe gets. Okay. Like, oh, he's a character from Spinal Tap. Well, that, they were basing that those more people is on people more like thing. him. That more is more thing is just that it's he amazing. said. He, sa- he said it so well. It, it was like, the thing about it is uh, like the confidence that he has while saying it. You know, he's, he's saying it as if as if he's saying something very profound and deep and in a way it is I have to play it I have to play it I just for, love for the, the comments like, he's like a, when I say so he's not self aware at all this he's a, two string, three string, four string, five, six string arpeggios but people kept on telling me to slow down you know I said hey slow down I'm like oh no remember less is more and I always said how can that be how can less be more it's impossible more is more <laughs> The way he's, it's how, impossible. It's impossible. It's more, more is more. more. Yeah. How can less be? Mo, it's it's so obvious and it's so true. Ah, oh, God, that fucking guy. What a genius. He is a genius. He is a genius. He is. And it's like, dude, also he's at so guitar. He's so good at guitar. And he's so good at being like famous too, like being famous at what he does. Like you know, dressing up, being consistent. Not flip flopping, not like changing course, start making like blues albums because he has a bad day, you know. Like a lot of people do with their careers, where they just become famous at one thing, 
and then just fundamentally just flip like on their when, audience like, like, like oh like, like do a gypsy jazz album when you're a fusion band <laughs> no we, it's, it's i know not, i know it's but, but it's not the same joking. thing like st- like to stay in your fucking lane and to reach a new height with what he you do ma- takes a lot of courage he makes music that he likes yeah he completely changed our guitar is like like him or don't like him you can't ignore his contribution right i'm saying even if you, if you start going uh, playing guitar there is a lot of stuff that he discovered sure. Yeah, there's something, there's, there's something that guitar players do sometimes, some of them, that I really don't... Like, even Scott Henderson, who is really one of my favorite players ever, I find it unpalatable to, like, kind of... The, the turn he took to blues and the way he was talking about it while he was doing it. Like, basically, like, saying, ah, fusion, stupid, nobody wants to hear that, let's do yeah. a blues album. It's like, dude, it's like, those are your fans, like, including me. It's like, that we love that shit. And then, like, we're like, all right, let's see this blues thing. And then it's like, no, blues is boring. <laughs> yeah. Come back. And the blues stuff also, we, you like it because he kind of plays like a fusion player. Yeah, because he plays That's like, what I like it. Yeah, because he plays like I don't crazy. listen to blues, but I like how he plays, though. Well. Right, right. So, like the song Dolomite. Yeah, it's like exactly. Badass, That's what I like. Uh, yeah, it's like some bebop line thrown in there. You're like, ooh. A little dominant. Yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah, it's like yeah. he plays like a jazz player, which is what, that's what I like. I, I, I did think that I came up with something really clever. I didn't find a way to articulate it yet, but to call the those people chopless it's like, like it's like homeless, like homeless yeah. but i imagine them like pushing an empty cart down the street There's and no being like with, yeah <laughs> it's just like it's like no it's like having less is more <laughs> i don't need all this it's like i'm freer than you because i get to really live in the well, world you know you have people like like call train hoppers i know without you know, that's, you know that's, what we have in common what but we stink <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's literally celebrating it's celebrating musical homelessness that that's what it is. It's just like it's like no, why do you need skills? You don't need skills but to make I music like Bill oh, yeah. marry him then. <laughs> like we tried to listen to his to this one record. What but was a, it like a uh, happy boy full dog <laughs> no oh. good dog, happy man, a good dog, happy man you're close, yeah. And it it was, sounds good. It's like, great in, in some ways. Listen, I thought I thought it was some of the highest quality backing tracks I, available actually, on YouTube. That was, album. It, it really confused me, because the way I listen to music now, but it's but I've been on the road for ten years. But the way I listen to music now, mm-hmm. I listen to how people play. Right. And when you listen to something that almost nothing happens, but the point is how pristine the recording is. Mm-hmm. I'm like, am I listening to the engineer? Like, what no, no, they're they're to? all making getting good sounds and the drummer's really grooving. I thought so, and like everything. Was yeah, yeah, I like that. Down. No, the no, no, I'm not saying good. we didn't play well. I'm just saying that we didn't do a lot. No, it's so I didn't just, get it. it That's w- what I'm saying. I, again, I thought it was backing tracks. I thought like if I if I just put that record on as is and soloed over it, you know, it would be really fun at home. It legitimately sounded like a great soundtrack to me. Like you can imagine, like a small town Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. Something about an opioid pandemic yeah. and somebody riding a tractor. Yeah, like the, like the, what's the name? Straight movie? story. Straight story. Something good. Like a good movie. It's a good, yeah. great soundtrack. Yeah. But just melodically, there's not a lot of stuff happening though. So to me, what you're listening to, and that, but that's what we try to get you to listen to is the sound. Yeah. Draw your attention to that stuff. It is a sound because like every note counts because there's not a lot of them mm-hmm. and there's you know they're not really lines they're just like ding, do, 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 do. I don't know the melodies are moving so slow that well, they no don't melodies. sound like melodies it didn't me. sound like melodies exactly it sounds, sounds like, like comping it's not, it's, it's sometimes some of them sound like like a harmonized well, part well the solo no, yeah yeah so but like some, some of the melodies there sounded quotes. like something would be like the second melody in a song like a harmonized part yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I get what you said but uh yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's made for a different kind of person fundamentally. Yeah, like but, um, somebody that wants. I don't to, understand it. I think it's somebody that doesn't want to be taken on a trip. It's somebody that wants to have some sort of um, backing to their fantasizing of music, like that. That they like it. It gives you so much space that you project your own meaning on it, kind of like modern art it, or something. Uh, like it's not I don't know if I would go that far I think it's it's more practical I can see it I can see listening you know I don't smoke weed at home yeah I barely do it on the road but it's like, I can imagine if you smoke weed at home mm-hmm. and you're kind of in a chill out environment and you put it on and as half background while you're on your phone but I can't you know I understand that and I think that's true but I can't imagine that when they made it that was their intention 
So what was the intention? I don't know. I don't know people like that. I don't hang out with people like that. But I, I, I think they just kind of like, what they do is like they make like a sound, like they make like do a me- major the- scale melody, like do do de- right. Question, de- question. Do- but that's like, more, yeah. me- right. more melody that they had. No, it's more I thought of whole notes. Do da- they listen to it in the booth? Okay, after they played back and were like, dude, that's fucking sick. Well, I don't think they do. I think they just nod their heads to each other. They like, they like, clo- oh, they're, you know, like if you squint your eyes open, you see like the bassist drummer there. They're all just like, as they listen to it, like are quietly nodding yeah. their I'm heads. I'm not being yes. facetious, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. actually well, no, asking what you, what you think. No, if it's like if, if most people listen. Because when we listen to our stuff, when it's just getting mixed, like, dude, this fucking... Yeah, this is sick. sick. This it's is gonna, sick. It's oh. going to tear a hole in your fucking dick. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to be amazing, yeah. No, 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 but I think they just... I imagine them sitting in the booth after they just kind of played the, all those whole notes, like a slow groove. There's like a really pristine like brush groove. Like Shh, into it. Oh, yeah. Well, and then you're going like... Too much. Too yeah, much I can't do it. I can't even fake it. Do they, but whatever uh, do they, they say, dude, what, the stuff you do did play is no, so, too much. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't even know how to do. Melody. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine so slow. Um, I don't it's know. It's not just slow. It's just there's no melody. It's, you think there's like a brain surgery that like we can take that like uh, will make us write like yeah, that? Yeah, of course. Like just that like it's just maybe. a hammer to the head. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, electroshock therapy. But anything between five and twenty pounds. <laughs> like you just wake up. The doctor's like, like Danny. You're okay Shred, now. and you're like, you're okay why? Now. Why would I? <laughs> <laughs> you're okay this now. Is more, doctor. We, we took away your 30 second notes. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Now I will have success. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, and then you put out like first record, it gets adopted by NPR. You f- find yourself in Tiny Desk. Yeah. Yeah. Fretboard Journal calls you. That's how but, it happens. But that's, you see, but when I see a show, mm-hmm. when the sound is not at pristine, a show like that, I really don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, like it doesn't sound that good when it's not super produced in the studio. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I love our show. I love just watching. The our show sh- is better live, obviously. Yeah, than the, uh, the records. You can't you can't go. Watching the bestowing the shred on people when you tear a mind to pieces when you shred a mind, watching the what what it does, it's just the best sensation in the world. There's nothing better when it's landing. Yeah, yeah. it's really so much better live. Yeah. I'm saying I kind of I mean I I was at a Bill Frizzell show twice I went once in college and once, once with, with you, um, yeah and man that was boring. But oh I was saying God, it didn't was sound dying. that good either. Well, also to to be fair to them, I hate the sound in the room. Space. Yeah, I hate the sound. Yeah, there. yeah, it's a room in uh, Evanston in yeah, Chi- by Chicago. Like, can I say that the people are kind of a little bit douchey? Yeah, the people so there are a little douchey and and they mix. They have like they're millionaires, so they have like the most expensive gear and the devil and, was job and it's they really love using it like they have this sound in mind that's like super verby and high endy in their mind but they just make everything sound like a mess no it's not good yeah 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 city winery, small room. Way, too when we played city winery i was like dude this sounds fucking that sounds awful yeah it's like you cannot have anybody with drums at city winery yeah that's another thing i was like this, this sounds terrible it's it's like, i feel like i'm Know, with sound, with sound one. people, you just gotta, you just gotta be lucky. It's all about what that person. No, no, imagines. but the room, the way we designed the room, it's like, hey, we designed the room to be terrible with drums. Right. But then we're gonna book bands with drums. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. Um, instead of doing something that's more neutral, that's what they should, a room should be. Yeah. Just fine to be in. Yeah, like not completely dead, but you know, it just sounds good with with a lot of instruments, mm-hmm. not too loud. But they're like, no, oh, we're gonna make it like a concert hall. This motherfucker, this is not a concert hall. Yeah, you can fit 120 people in. Well, here. I mean, I think when you're a sound engineer and you're trying to make the room you're in sound like a different room, you're already playing a losing game. Rooms sound the way they sound. You have, you gotta listen to what's in front of you, and you got to, like, accentuate a little bit. I of really it. can't wait to start playing with an amp, so the sound people a lot of times will have zero work other than give you a talkback mic. Yeah. That would be so nice. It would be when we have that control. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm sure our shows will sound much, much better, better consistently. Talking about amps, 
I got my amp fixed yesterday before the show. Yes. Big, big shout out to the guys at Ant Hill Farm. Ant Farm. Ant Farm. Uh, music. Music. Ant Farm Music. In Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, they're kind of close to New York City. Uh, Fun guys, too. Yeah, it's a little shop. Really nice guys. We have cool, we have, if you like stuff that uh, looks like it's washing, half washing machines, half uh, ants. Yeah. Those are cool. Yeah, they're really cool. Like the, the old stuff, mm -hmm. the real stuff. So. And, uh, but just w terrific repair guy there in Jay and he fixed my amp like uh, I found out what was wrong with it I frantically changed all the tubes and put them in a random order like all my preamp to my amp sounds so weird right now like it's still it has the power but the preamp it's is so really, much better than the preamp is uh, is a little grainy because you know the the order of the tubes Wait, really are you matters. Gonna fix it before we're coding I'm guessing uh, I'm not sure I mean it's not it's not that crazy different uh, do you but even would know how to do it I'm not sure which one goes in which. Uh, I mean, again, they're all the same, but they just, uh, you know, they're different That's style the tubes. So it's like when you rearrange them. Why don't you just them. ask Tim uh, Shodo? Uh, I'm not sure if he'll remember. I'll ask him. Okay. Uh, but anyways, so that wasn't what was wrong with it, though. Uh, the mid, the pot for the mid range and the dirty channel broke, and it's, it's wired in series. So the entire tone stack didn't work. So basically my amp on the dirty channel sounded like everything was on 10, and it was just twice as loud. Um, also the soldering on the power cable. It yeah, yeah, that that the... does a does a little thing. But anyway, so I played with my backup amp for four gigs. It was uh, and it's it's not a bad amp. It's actually for home one of the best amps you can have. It's, it's uh, pretty, yeah, it's it has it has good power scaling. It's called uh, a Badger by sorts of thirty watt amp. It's not even close, dude. Well, like the tone, I'm not talking about even that this one the thirty one doesn't have enough mids mm -hmm. uh, to cut through a bend. It's just the tone is not as good. It's you know I I realize I'm buy, I'm gonna buy another one of the amp. I have the custom audio amplifier audio 100. But it's uh, not. It's it, don't you like always think? It's, how must be something better. There's nothing better that I found. How yet. crazy is that? I mean, again, two amps. I could see how I can find like a nicer clean tone and a nicer a distortion tone. Actually, I'm not. Maybe just a, an old Marshall would work. But uh, play an old Marshall maybe yeah, because every Marshall I already play it was always like cause yeah. sometimes they give it to us in backlines when we have we can't fly before Gil. Right. Yeah. And it's always like Ugh. no, like a sewer Marshall or something like the the Scott Henderson type head with an effects loop. But in any case, the the point is having to having played with the band like four nights with a thirty watt amp, I just realized that like man, the preamp section of an amp doesn't matter. It's like it's nice to have like a nice tube preamp like a lot of the modern amps now they're going for like tube preamp solid state power amp the power amp is the amp yeah you know what i mean it's like and that's the thing i had that that 30 watt cooking it was like almost on 10 right it's just as as much power as it could give you it was pushing hard it was compressed but man it's like you like that clean headroom the actual power that's where you're for me i noticed two things in those shows first of all when you run out of headroom and you're using reverb and delay especially in an effects loop you get this thing where it's gluing there's no separation between your ambient sound and your sound yeah because you need that clean headroom for that for there to for the speaker to be able to kind of make both of them come out and then the other thing is just your dynamic range is just nothing it, it shrinks to nothing and it's like playing like a 30 watt amp cranked is like playing with a huge distortion pedal and a hundred watt tube amp is not like playing with a distortion pedal it's like it's you're actually playing the amp but i mean i think i i totally see why people that don't have good chops are allergic to, to these well they also saw that you said that you might want something that's not like with 60 or 70. there, there probably is a better sweet spot because i'm 100 is a lot of headroom um I'm guessing. I'm guessing that my sweet spot is going to be somewhere between seventy-five. Like a super reverb. A super reverb is forty, but like a oh. twin is eighty. Oh. Uh, but it doesn't scale linearly. Yeah. So uh, twin yeah. Is like no, not a twin, but like something. Like if I could, I'm. I'm guessing the, the for me the sweet spot will be somewhere in that range, maybe seventy so to ninety-one. In, in the signature. Amp, yeah, one say. day. Um, I should message too about it yeah but it, but it's really interesting i never had that experience of like playing gigs and um you know have and my amp never really broke in a way that we couldn't fix the day after 
Yeah, uh, usually we get quicker. Well, it's just one. Usually it's one. tubes or or just a uh, fuse. Okay, we were just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, uh, so we, we just didn't have anybody who can handle it. But anyway, it, it was really eye-opening for me. Like, I totally... Uh, and it's very funny, because when I got it, I felt like I have, like, a second... Like, I could hear things differently, and I was like... I immediately went and changed all my settings uh, on my clean and dirty channel, bef- like, when I first yeah. plugged in before soundcheck. And then during soundcheck, when we all played, I just... Everything had to move exactly to where it was when we always play yeah. because... Man, you just you just set your shit to sound good with your band. Yeah, that that that's what a good sound is. So uh, we're gonna take a, a a turn towards the darkness here. Um, yesterday during our ride, we were talking a guy, a guy we talked about on the podcast a few times. He actually, his name is Blake Ford. Or uh, we shouldn't say. No, no, no. We don't, I don't really know what happened. Yeah, we don't know what happened. Well, anyway, but. Um, and uh, I'll t- we'll tell you what we talked about uh, in the car. So, in any case, this, this is, he was a fan of ours. He opened for us a, a few times. I have like a... Uh, oh, friends, I would say, because uh, we met him a bunch. Yeah, and we had like stickers of his band. I still on my plexiglass shield on my amp. Good band, good fusion guitar player. He transcribed one of my solo on Magic Boro. Uh, really killed it. And yesterday we were just talking about him on a live feed. And then John Googled him because John he hired John to record on his album and then we found out that he died like a few weeks ago and we don't really know why but we knew that he was kind of he moved to LA a while back and was not doing too good there and man I gotta just say I think the fusion community uh, the fusion guitar playing community is uh, you know obviously a lot of you guys listening have your shit together have your life together and that's great but uh, dude there's something that's actually like on a serious note Danny said this before but like man if if this thing this music thing is not working out for you it's okay you know it's like there's other shit you can do you can always even if you're 30 even if you're 40 40 50 you've dedicated a lot of time and energy and this it's not it's not all wasted not every I we were talking about this guy that went to college with Danny. His name was Adam. And uh, he was, you know, Danny was there, and Danny was clearly, like, you know, the best... Pl- uh, Danny was... It's this dark secret that he was in uh, music college for a minute. Seconds, yeah. You know, for like a year to, to have his uh, visa yeah, then, when he I, first I moved here. I stopped in the middle of a semester when I got my... Yeah, my as soon as he got his artist visa, he dropped out. Yeah. Um, but in that same program was uh, the saxophone player named Adam, who really was trying to sound like Charlie Parker, and he was good at it. That kind of kind of yeah, guy. just playing bebop and but doing it well, and he got his back like better than most. Yeah, like clearly he would stick out in in the jam session. Clearly stick out. Clearly he knew what he was doing, and he got his bachelor's degree, and then when he got a full ride to do his masters. Yeah, I got to, f- to teach a little bit. Scholarship, master, yeah. did did great there. Was like the best in that school. Then he moved to New York, got on a label, a small one, but yeah. Yeah, but and he was doing okay for a New York guy, and like for somebody. Who just but he was York. like a smart guy. Looked around him, realized that nothing's gonna happen. Went to law school, and now he's a lawyer. And now he's a lawyer. Probably has a family. You know, doing well. It's like this this life you know it's like it's not for everybody and uh like to do it full time and again i'm not trying to discourage anybody who wants to try but like god man you gotta you gotta take care of yourself you gotta notice when it's taking a dark turn you know i'm not there's a real difference there's a real cutoff between like what you would consider a challenge and a rough patch it's tough because nobody tells you no so if you are if you want to be in the, and I don't understand a lot about any sports, but let's say if you want to be in the NFL, um, right, they have like a, something called a combine. I don't know. Isn't that? I think we have a, something that you, you can come out and you can come and try out and without everybody. But after a while, if nobody gets you, they're not getting you. Like right. you're not doing it. You're not in the NFL anymore. Right. And, but in music, nobody... Nobody's com- coming to tell you, and I, I think the people that actually have it the worst are not the people that are not good, but the people like Blake for that were actually talented and good. Yeah, it's like when you play great, 
and you're better than all the people you're seeing, in a way, more people are going to take advantage of you. And, and they're going to take advantage. The people that are there to get your money, especially if you're like, you know, some people are prone to like, you know, a little bit manic depressive. It's not rare in music. Yeah. When you're going through a manic phase, there's a lot of people who will line up to take your money to just, you know, just uh, enable this manic kind of thing and rob you. Just say like, yeah, yeah, let's do a project together, fund it, boom, they take your money. Like, I know this producer, I worked with this person on that album. There are people, there are people famous that we know that are famous, that ho- their whole shtick, their whole job is to quote unquote produce people, which just means to make an album for them. But when they do it, they just take all your money, they pay all their friends with it. Yeah, and ben, you get something you can't dude, ben, make any money with it. the guy was approaching Ben it's like dude your music is amazing you're so good it's like you just need to take it to the next level here is the guy that walk I don't remember the name of a band of a, that person that walk with but like some famous someone ridiculous rock say, band yeah yeah let's say like oh this guy walked with uh, Queen on appetite yeah. of distraction or for distraction with Guns N' Roses right, with right. Roses. like stuff like that and then But when we talk about it, it's like, yeah, hey, you're so great. We just need, you know, to make our money so we can pay for the studio and all that stuff and the people yeah, and, and you, everything. And, 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 and people, I don't even want to say fall for it, but they don't, they don't tell them all the stuff they did that's not after for distractions. Now, you're usually also again, these people uh, are, just, are like, well, you know, at that point, they were... Uh, Well, I mean, a no, lot like of the, a, an assistant producer to no, the assistant. Even the people that are for real that did that stuff, you know, a lot of them set up their businesses after that point to draw people with money to their studios, you know, after they made, you know, let's say 10 great albums, you know, okay, so that took what? Even if each one t- took a month, that's a year of their life. Yeah. They spend a year of their life making albums that sold a lot. What, what are they doing with the rest of their time? They're, they're producing they're producing albums that won't sell they know they won't sell uh, for exorbitant budgets all privately funded you know uh, and pay all their you know pay like their their circle it's engineers uh, it's players it's sometimes arrangers and you know whatever backup singers like they you just don't want to end up in that position and again the people who are who are capable of musically but not capable not savvy with other things listen what me and Danny did is not trivial we have and also we don't have the same the same skill set like we cooperate we collaborate uh, not only in music but we split our workload to, and like Danny is very good at some things that I could never do you know like all the booking all the business stuff the emailing keeping track of all of all that stuff and Uh, the financial side of what's happening I'm not doing any of that you know it's like I do a lot of the social media kind of things so the point is that your stack of skills that you need to have to even succeed to the level that we manage to which isn't some crazy financial level but it's sustainable um, it's not trivial yeah you know? and being good at music is not enough and being good at music is totally not enough but yeah those people who are just good in music and just eagerly waiting for things to fall into place and And it also makes sense, the problem with people, it also makes sense, because, okay, you need a booking agent, like, well, the booking agent is not going to work for free, who do you know, you don't like to work for free, so why does the booking agent going to work for free? Right. And you don't have enough stuff going on yet, so yeah, of course you're going to pay him 500 bucks a month, that's nothing. Like, 500, the way people think about it is this, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll pay this booking agent 500 bucks a month, if he books me 20 shows, that's fucking nothing, that's 25 bucks a show, that's right. nothing, you know, but... They, most of them will not book you 25 bucks a show and if it, and the shows that we're gonna book you you're not gonna make 50 bucks you're gonna lose you're gonna lose a hundred bucks right and you're gonna play in front of nobody and we just saw it again and again and again and again and I'm not saying that there's nobody in the music business that's a good person and actually would help but it's it's very difficult to discern those people yeah the point is just don't don't get into some crazy drugs and don't kill yourself yeah. and also just, and also just, people just change direction also it's pe- okay people don't like to tell you when they've been fooled in music that's another thing yeah like you ask people oh, everybody's doing should great should I advertise with uh, random I would say Omani yeah Omar, Omani what's the name Omari Omari actually I pay Omari and everybody's like yeah I got all these plays and it's all American plays and it's all that and this and that 
and then we tried it for a day and I saw the type of plays we got I saw uh, the playlist and so with us, I was like immediately, up, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. We don't want to go, stop Myanmar it, stop plays, it, stop it. It's Bangladesh. not worth it. Stop it. It's gonna, it's gonna ruin our page. Right. I don't care if it says by that it's Americans. It's not Americans. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's gonna ruin our algorithms to who it shows it to. Mm-hmm. Stop it immediately. So yeah. we stopped it immediately after a day. I was like, this is not, this is not happening. But we asked a lot of people and they recommended it because yeah, because people, because people want to believe that it was that the stuff is worth it. Because like what, nothing happened to. Me, or it's like everything I wasted is fake, my money. Some money. It's worse. You, it, yeah. you worth it as some money because you paid to destroy yourself. That's what you do. Yeah. Same people that buy uh, likes on Facebook. It's like when nobody sh- sees your shit. It's already hard to get people to see right. your stuff. But if you buy stuff, nobody sees your shit if you buy likes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Like very rarely now we'll get people accusing us for like getting, uh, for, you know, buying uh, views. Uh, but it's like you know, it's, we never we we didn't do it. You know, it's a uh, well, we advertised our page to we, people who thought gonna like. No, we it. used Facebook ad ads. That's not the same as buying uh, you buying, know, yeah. buying likes on like uh, an Indian, uh, you know, a lot of services. Like web, web, like, oh, real web followers, yeah. real followers on YouTube, including comments, and you can buy as many comments. But again, you and and people, how do you think those people? Who are those people that has that have a power? To get you anywhere in a click of a button, anywhere between a thousand and a hundred thousand real people, real views and comments, and you can even buy how many comments you want. No, and you again, think it's real you, people. You look at our page. I mean, the amount of traffic that's generated there is insane. You know, but and it's also a. You know, I don't think anybody saying, really thinks. No, no, no. I know, but when you look at when you look at fake pages, like you know, the comments are so funny. It's like it's and like the profile brand, pictures yeah. are ridiculous. Yeah, you you can see it on YouTube too. Yeah, it's like Sri Lankan people. It's like I love you much. <laughs> and on YouTube too. You, you are my favorite band music people. <laughs> what a great song! It's just like so generic, man. What are they generic? What are, what are we talking about? Oh, oh, fucking Dream Theater, dude! This guy yesterday. Uh, to asked us to play The Spirit Carries On by Dream Theater. That's an old uh, song. Yes. Uh, I didn't know it, but I remember it because that was the main the main lyric. And we were talking about that on our ride. And God, that I found that song so appalling. Like just, you know, I'm not a Dream Theater fan, admittedly. I never, I never was really into them. Uh, but... Just on just on the level of the lyric, for I thought I thought two things. One thing, and and I mentioned this yesterday that like I forget I think it was like Gamban or some philosopher my mom likes. She sent me a thing, but he was talking about being trapped in, inside somebody else's dream, inside somebody else's fantasy. And that song, let's quote unquote borrowed from "Shine On You Crazy Diamond" to a ridiculous extent in so many parts, but. The real danger that I felt mu- before we get into the lyrics, that musically, that like I saw just listening to that song, it's almost like you can unknowingly and implicitly be trapped inside your idea of the archetypal song. So to them, like the the archetypal epic is "Shine On You Crazy Diamond," and they don't see it. But all they're doing is just changing parameters inside the boundary set by Pink Floyd. Yeah. You know? And and it's like Pink Floyd set this like kind of what they consider a masterpiece, very long, very through composed with lots of sections, with lots of moods. And like, you know, the way it grows is just code changes. the drums get intensified, the choir comes in. Like, you know, just, just like, so they're so trapped inside their vision of what this song means all the to time. be. You see it with just saxophone players all the time? It's really one of my least favorite things, and I know, I know it's going to happen to me in a disgusting way too someday, mm-hmm. like somebody's going to do it, that people look at what you do, and are like, oh, I know how I'm going to improve it. I, uh, and when they do, they add something to it or change it in a way that makes like but yeah but m- maybe makes people like it mm-hmm. but is but but uh it's it's Missing. so nothing so with that song it was like oh our guitar solo is gonna shred right that's what i felt like 
and our production's it, gonna be really clean and the yeah. drums are it's gonna like, be like you know really what would shine on would be better if we really have a shell guitar like right. Vetzel is better than Vetzel right you know that kind of stuff like oh our drum sound is gonna be better so it's like it's gonna be a better song no but right. somehow it fucking works no and with saxophone players you see it all the time well no How people no. that are extreme when you <coughs> when you're extreme and me and Danny are extreme players Right? Why are we extreme players? Because we look for shit all the time and we try to push the envelope. And when you push the envelope and you try new shit all the time, sometimes you miss. And I know, you know, I know that a lot of fans, they don't understand it. Like if I'll show them, oh, I missed here, I missed there. Mm-hmm. But they don't think it's a miss, but it's a miss. I know it is. Yeah. And it, and it happens and it's fine. That's part of the deal of breaking your gown. But sometimes it doesn't work as, as well as you wanted to. But what, what I think what distinguishes me and you from other people is that we're totally free of something that they are not, which is we never liked fusion. Yeah. Like we never liked fusion. We never thought of fusion as a style. Like I'm talking about our predecessors. Uh, we never thought about their songs and their song structures as something that was free of problems, right? Like yeah. tribal tech songs, I always thought were silly, right? Like just the way they were put together, like kind of random sounding melodies and the structure was weird, like the solos were great, some elements I loved. You know, I even returned to, like, forget about Return to Forever, Weather Report. Like, I, a lot, still this day. Weather which is my favorite fusion band, and still it's like, I, yeah. Yeah, again, I listen to Weather Report half the time. I'm like, I'm just, what's going on in this, this song? So what's silly. the melody? This what's is so go- silly. Yeah. yeah, it's like, this just, you know, it's, it's so, like, the whole song and composition part of fusion, I never felt like anybody did it right, so we never really tried to imitate anybody. There was never, like, a strong, uh, there was never a band we idolized so much. I guess if there was something that was the closest to that, it was Pat Metheny Group, when we were making Breaking the Cycle. And then it was And over. even then, it's like, it's really not like putting the no, stuff. No, it's not. But that was the only time I can think of where we had some sort of... Um, you can do a connection to somebody that's kind of in the style, yeah. It, compositionally. You know what I mean? Just well, not, me- not melody-wise or harmony-wise. Or no, no, no. Like, but the only just, thing I would say, like, uh, not... In see, the way, in the way that, in texturally. Yeah, I was saying like, exactly textually. Tex- textually or like when you play with synth guitar, it's like oh, this guy is coming from there, like in right, and like the way it would like you have a lot of layers of percussion. You know, that was to in my mind. You know, I can I I, I was trying to match that vision, yeah. right? But again, there were there were still in his music. I always found it to be way too giddy, way too like over like the top. over the top, like emo- like it. It's the kind of music that a man that would wear a speedo to a jazz festival <laughs> would make. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, just so. But that's also what I was saying. Like I, I hate that's to say what it. I like it about him, though, because you do. You, but when you do something that's when you push the envelope, like sometimes you do crazy shit, and you you know you take oh, meth and go it's go on a, to a jazz festival in a speedo. Yeah. But uh, yeah, meth. But meth when does you have meth. all those people that come and take it back a step right, right, and right. make it not as extreme. Yeah. And that, I don't. No, like no. God it. bless him. I love. It, it makes it really. That's the people I don't like. I love Matheny. He looks like a gay lion, but I love him. Yeah, but and but but you see, you had Kurt Rosenwinkel after him, and like taking a lot of Metheny stuff, but it's like yeah, I'm not just gonna making make it, it over the top no, like he did. I'm gonna make it bring like, it back to jazz. Like this is gonna be me in like Smalls in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. like I'll make it hip. Yeah, like he's is ridiculous. I'm gonna make it hip. Right. Same thing with you know, with uh, Boyker and Chris Potter, I think, which is funny because now Boyker's yeah, because Instagram is also really popular. So a lot of so many people are Boyker imitators again. Yeah, but Chris Potter and Chris Potter did to Brecker what Kurt Rosenwinkel did, did to, to Pat because yeah. you know they just drug him, drug him back from the fe- from the concert hall in the expensive studio to the loft, you know, to the private show at the loft or at the little. They jazz brought it club. back to kind of be like to be in jazz. They made it indie. It's just yeah. indie versions of that thing, just lo-fi and without the frills and without the nice harmony behind it and without all the production and backing. I think backing. that bit being completely over the top. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, so. that's, that's how I see it. But in any case, so listening to Dream Theater, it's like they, for that song at least, they were just trapped inside that Pink Floyd, yeah. like, boundary. And it's like when, you're, when you like something else so much, you're not free to see where your own ideas go. That's the thing, because you pour all of your ideas into into a receptacle that already has a shape. Yeah, what and you said melody- about changing palmet, that was perfect, because yeah. that's really how it feels. Yeah, because it's like, you know, when you're writing, a lot of the times, it starts with unknowing. It just starts with, like, this is cool. 
where does where should this go once you try to be like where should this go in a song that sounds like shine on your crazy diamond it's no long it can't go to, the, to where it wants to go it's gonna go there yeah. right it's and, like you've, you've, and you've I already can tell you from writing like a lot of times we would hear something cool and we would be like hey, I want to do something kind of like it mm-hmm. and we would take an element and write something by the time we finish with the first measure or the first idea of a bass line or first riff it's already so different yeah nothing that, like it that we have to we would have to force it to be like the original song that's right you know but usually you do it and I was like oh it's not it's a not it didn't go at all where I thought it went in the beginning and then by the end of the song it's really nothing like the, the, yeah. where you started yeah well the other thing about that song is just listening to the lyrics it was just I'm gonna pull up the lyrics just so I can just so I can read them out okay I'm gonna they, say my thought about it while, while you do that but they went when you read a book or you see a movie or show or listen to a song that they depict a person it's you know the person needs to be realistic so you can empathize with him uh, we talked about two songs today one of them is me and Bobby McGee that they don't say a man and a woman and they're, they're talking about the places we were going he said uh, busted down in Baton Rouge, New, Baton Rouge waiting, for, waiting a for a train right it, they don't say busted down in a place <laughs> waiting for a vehicle right you know it's just it's the, when you go specific you can imagine the person you can imagine a real person you have a picture of a real person and with that song uh, I contrasted it to Why Me Lord which, uh, when Chris Christopherson is talking about his uh is uh experience, experience of finding in Jesus yeah. and like how he was overwhelmed by like uh, like how he was like not worthy and he's a sinner as in, in perfect imperfection and with all the stuff that's going on in the world how he actually is lucky and how God bestowed all the great things upon him and you know the simple things too but that's how he that's how he felt and, and you can empathize with him you don't have to be Christian to, un- to understand what it's like where somebody is all of a sudden so grateful for uh, you know to be to be in this world and for the things that he and and we always people tend to focus on the negative and all of a sudden that he realized kind of like in a yeah, yeah but that's like but in this epiphany and what, what, all, all the stuff he has and the song the the, pre, the song that Dan is gonna read the links to it's just it doesn't sound like a person it just sound like a computer generated computer generated uh, text to convey generic emotion yeah that's that nobody that nobody can you know it's like you can't see a person in it you can't see yourself in it you just it's meant to be a successful song you know and it is a successful song which is mind-boggling to me but you know the 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 role of poetry in life of good poetry and at the end of the day lyric good lyrics are good poetry are just to pinpoint uh, an emotional perspective to a to a level where other people can see it too. It's like you take the reality and you narrow it down with words so precisely to what you're feeling that you can that other people can just live inside that frozen kind of emotion for eternity. You know that's why Dante and Shakespeare and Leonard Cohen and whoever you know it's like all, all the all the people who have figured out a way to kind of crystallize a feeling into a into a sentence or a bunch of sentences well, when you hear an oak tree or a whipping willow or a hemlock in a song you you see something when you hear just a tree right it's nothing right a tree is nothing it's just a it's just a it's, it's just a subcategory right of plants it's a it's it's so it's with, so silly and, with that with, and, and with, before you just started it to me it sounds like that song that is about to read it sounds like they wanted oh we don't want to it sounds like they're trying they to write bring an anthem Je- it's like a spiritual song but we don't want to bring Jesus into it we don't want to bring Buddha into it whatever we got um, you don't Muhammad. want to bring yourself into yeah, it yeah you don't want to we don't want to exclude anybody so we're just going to do it in the most general way general way yeah, possible so it goes like this where did we come from why are we here? Where do we go when we die? What lies beyond? And what lay before? Is anything certain in life? They say life is too short. The here and the now. And you're only given one shot. But could there be more? Have I lived before? Or could this be all what we've got? 
all that we've got sorry if I die tomorrow it'll be all right because I believe that after we got we're gone the spirit carries on I used to be frightened of dying I used to think death was the end but that was before I'm not scared anymore I know that my soul will transcend before what before he realized that the spirit carries on I may never find all the answers I may never understand why I may never prove what I know to be true but I know that I still have to try Can prove it? move on be brave don't weep at my grave I won't because I am no longer here but please never let your memory of me disappear safe in the light that surrounds me free from the fear and the pain my questioning mind has helped me to find the meaning in life again Victoria is real hey that's Ben song I finally feel at peace with my girl in my dreams that took a turn and now that I'm here it's perfectly clear I found out what all this all of this means that last verse why did he throw his girl in there I think his wife wrote that last verse yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully you guys understand our perspective now, even if you... It's, just, yeah, it's so bad. What is it? It's nothing. It's just nothing. It's not that it's word bad, it's just nothing. I just don't understand. L- like, lyrics to me are the most revealing things about people because it's hard to commit to lyrics. I, yeah. Like, I tried writing a lot of words in my life. Very difficult. Very hard to feel good about it a day or two after. But... It's amazing because, you know, in one way, people will say, you know, even people listening to that, you know, pragmatically say, it's like, yo, to who, who are these two guys to talk? These guys like fill up arenas. Yes. And, and they're right. But I'm not, cri- the thing is that you need to understand is I'm not criticizing the band. I'm criticizing everybody who fucking likes this stupid <laughs> ass song. You all are a bunch of morons. <laughs> no, no. no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, no. But it's, but, but no, but truly... I don't know, man. It, it, it's, uh, I find it insulting to my intelligence when somebody sing like, you know, when I have to sit there with lyrics like that and actually think, ponder them. You know, it's so funny to me, but it's like somebody like Sting, which is not a deep writer at all, and you, uh, and you listen to a song like Roxanne, is, is a... A whole other level. It's like a, a Shakespeare composer. To- yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a whole other like in the seventies. There were like what Paul Simon, Jim Croce. It's like these guys are genius writers. Even Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Yeah, yeah, because it's like again they you know th- they spoke about something that happened to them once. They didn't even speak about like some grand. It's not like a song that that they, that they spent eight years polishing like Leonard Cohen, yeah. where every every word is like weighed out. And every sentence is balanced. Yeah, it's, like you know, like Piano Man, which is a gra- great song. You yeah. said it, you know that like. You, then he's talking about Piano Man in the context of uh, oh, yeah, of, yeah. of people paying dues, where people talking about paying dues when they never paid dues, yeah. like because Billy Joel played played at a bar once yeah. and, and and wrote Piano Man. But I'm sure I'm sure he played at a bar once. Yeah. and had the idea, and it, he probably actually he did. I had him talking about it. Did he? Yeah, and he said what was people are real people that used to come to a bow. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. again, he did that gig for like you know a couple of years maybe before he got probably famous. Probably not, but right, yeah. probably a couple of months. Uh, and then he had an idea and he wrote a great song. And that's really all it takes. But you gotta just take something from your life that actually happened to you either in your emotion or in your imagination. But this thing, like the song I just read, it just feels like somebody trying to write a thing that sounds like a song. Yeah. You know what I mean? And really not commit. It's like, it's really... Like, what is he talking about? What, did you see a person? Like, where is that person? Where, is he, where was he sitting? In his room high? Can you imagine? <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Like, what's the picture that you saw when you heard those lyrics? Did, like, is this person, like a teenager in his room being like, Hey man, it's like, does it even mean anything, man? Like, smoking weed for the second time? It's like... Yeah, man. No, that's like, if, I if, can't if you, even imagine a situation. If, if there was a person talking like this guy, like with with the actual emotion that this he wouldn't, because there is nothing in it. I just maybe don't I can't a, imagine a it. homeless person, you know, that's like on a meth binge, like, and you give him acid, and he's walking down the street. Even the spirit carries on. No, I'm not they, afraid of dying. No, no, because <laughs> no, they actually have a very strong, like you know, on meth, they have a very strong. Uh, yeah. 
feeling of what's going on, whatever right. they see. They see the devil, they see, they see a lot of shit, but they definitely see it. That doesn't sound like a person. Who would say that? Man, dude, it's like, is there even reason for anything? It's like, oh, man. It's like, are we nothing here? It's I'm so... F- oh, dude, no, no, it's cool. We, we, our spirit will carry on. It's what does it mean? It's so meaningless. It's like, it makes no sense. I really don't like it. It means absolutely nothing. Which is, which, again, it's, it's, totally, it's totally insane. I, I just remember that there was this... You know what's uh, funny to me? The Paul Simon song that I never thought about uh, before. I guess I can do a set spoke more English about how huge percent of his, of his song is about fucking. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, got, I, gotta show, I gotta show the people something. I think this is it. Oh, yes. So, this was in uh, September 13th, 2016. I was, this is in Chicago, I was, uh, I, I just played at an open mic, okay, uh, singing songs, and I met this guy, what? 16, Oh yeah. and I met this guy out there, and he was homeless, living in the graveyard, like literally in Chicago, living there in a tent, and they wouldn't let him in the bar, because he was homeless, uh, yeah. but he had a guitar with him, and he wanted to join the open mic, and we were sitting outside, and... It was like, hey man, like you want to hear a song? And he played me like the best song I've ever heard. Like seriously, so honest and so great. And then... Don't build that button. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 it was really... It's awesome. It's it is aw- awesome. It's awesome. And then I made him sing best. it a second time and I recorded it with my phone. I still have it. Check this out. Okay. He looked like Willie Nelson. I forget his name. Shh. Everybody, quiet, please. Yeah. I caught my fat and ugly girlfriend pulling a train in the back room of the dope house time and again that big fat rock what it's all about chasing us junkies all over this town well she's inbred and she's ugly and built like a tank and like a mother before her she's a walking sperm bank she got dick on her breath combing her hair her shirts on inside out and backwards but she don't seem to care she got lovers at work there's a bunch of boys there and if you're a taxi driver she'll blow you for the fare she shared her mother's lover and her mother changed the lock and now the peepers in the window when the mouth is off the cock So she sends me on a beer run Once I'm out the door It's who wants to go first boys And her knees are on the floor She got a catchy little motto Try them all, see who's the best When she's caught red-handed in the act The bitch still won't confess She's a total and girl the problem Doing it since she was 12 And I'm convinced she's beyond therapy Ain't nothing gonna help them Train pull in Road dope house blues <laughs> Train pulling, road dope house blues. <laughs> and like her husband before me, I'm finding out the truth. I'd like to skin the bitch alive and maybe rub salt in her wounds. It'd be a whole lot easier just to wash my hands. And if she doesn't change her cheating ways, that's gonna be my plan. I can't go on like this much longer, and I think she'll understand. She's just a nympho with a problem wanting each and every man them. Train pulling, road dope house blues. Blues, train pulling, road dope house blues. And now it's finally dawning on me, the bitch must be insane. And if she don't want me to blow her off, she better grow a brain. Them train pulling, road dope house blues. Yeah, dude. Not dying back on Kevin. No, how fucking? Yeah, it's good. Who's howling? <laughs> The guy's dead for sure. Yeah. He was living in a graveyard in a tent. Like just I mean, I don't know, man. That that's a fucking song. You believe him. I that's believe a person. Him. That that's is That's a person. You can you can see the person. Dude, I was like, did you write that? He's like, yeah. <laughs> no shit. No shit. It's like, yeah. Of yeah, course, no shit. Of course you did. Yeah. It's like, dude, you know you know how good of a writer you need to be to make me jealous? Yeah. of the abilities of, of something that a homeless person has. It's like, he has something that I value so much more than people I know who are like fucking doctors. Just the ability to like take something from your life and give it to somebody else, something real. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. It's pretty fucking crazy. 
<laughs> but who was howling in the background? <laughs> it were just a bunch of us outside of the bar. Oh, you don't remember? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Ah, not like a fun or something. No, no. It was just I, I was just telling them to shut up so I can record them and so the, so they all listen. Oh, I see. And okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, because he sang it for me. I was like, will you just do that thing yeah, again? I like, I have to have this. Yeah, no, it's very awesome. Yeah, and they still wouldn't let him in the bar. Yeah. I mean, he did smell like shit, but yeah, I mean, it's just... Yeah, he's homeless. Yeah. It's like Kyle, Willie. that was his name. Kyle, Kyle Nelson. I asked him if he's related to, to Willie. He was not. No. Uh, yeah. what, do, what do you want? Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to let homeless people in, even if they have a guitar. I know. I know. I don't know. It blew my mind. Seriously. All right. On that note, we should probably pack it up. But uh, shit's been real. And yeah, uh, I want to sleep, but I don't know if I have time. Yeah, have I need time, to check. Time. I don't know. All right. Let me check. Bom, bom, bom. Bom. All right, guys. Whoa. Check us out at uh, facebook.com slash Marvin Music. Uh, and if you're feeling it down, you know, then uh, you can email us, message us. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. If, you, if you're feeling like your life's not going well with Fusion and you need a pep talk, just send us a message. Yeah. We'll, we'll help you out. Don't, yeah. don't, uh, don't do anything drastic. Don't do anything crazy. Just yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. hit us up. Hit us up. Uh, some people did, and it's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Stick around. Life is great. Uh, marvinmusic.bandcamp.com, all that stuff. See you guys next time.